Hi everyone, this is Louisa, and I'm just continuing my last video. This is more on Ohm's Law, specifically we're talking about scale, and this is part two. So I'm going to be describing a slightly more complicated circuit, and we're going to look at where the voltage and the current and the resistance vary at different levels. So we're going to be talking about the full circuit, and then we're going to look at each individual resistor, R1, R2, and R3. So let's start with the voltage. We know that the voltage across the entire circuit is going to be the voltage of the battery. And when we look at R1, we're going to see it's in a loop of its own. There's no other resistances in here. So that means that R1 is the only thing contributing to a voltage drop in that particular loop. That means its voltage must also be VB in order for the voltage to drop all the way back to zero before getting to the negative terminal of the battery. But when we look, oops, let me get rid of that. But when we look at R2 and R3, they're in series with one another, which means that the voltage across them, the voltage across both of them is equal to VB, because that's part of this full loop. But the voltage across just one of them is not equal to VB. It's less than that. Now, if we knew the numbers of the situation, we could probably figure out the voltage across either of them. But for now, all I'm going to say is that it's not equal to VB and this one also is not equal to VB. That's important because it lets us know that the voltage for uh, when we have multiple resistors in a loop is not going to be the same as the voltage across the entire circuit. So now let's take a look at current, and I'll do current in yellow. Now the current going through this loop, we can tell is going to be constant because there's only one resistor. And when we look at this larger loop, the current through this loop is going to be constant because when we go in a single pathway the current is constant. That's one of the laws that we learned in one of my other recent videos. However, the current in this loop and the current in this loop may not be the same. And that's because there's two different resistances in these loops. This one has a resistance of R1 and this one has a resistance of R2 plus R3. And since they both have the same voltage, because they're both complete loops with the voltage of the battery, that means that the current is going to be different, because we have the same V and two different R's. So by Ohm's law, we know that the current will not be the same. We also know that neither of those two loops are going to have a current that's equal to the current of the entire circuit. So the current of the entire circuit is going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistor of the entire uh, circuit. So that's an expression for the current of the entire circuit. So now we're going to write, we're going to fill in our chart here, and we're going to say the current for the circuit is I circuit. But the current across R1 is not going to be the same as that. We know the voltage at R1 is VB, and we know the resistance is R1. So we're going to say that the current at R1 is VB over R1. Now for R2 and R3, we did not calculate the voltages, so we can't write an expression for the current that way, but we can say that it's not equal to the circuit, and it's also probably not equal, equal to uh, the current at R1. Now let's take a look at the resistance, and I will do that one in red. The resistance of the entire circuit is R equivalent, which again, we know how to calculate, but I'm not going to bother doing that right now. So the resistance of R1 is R1, the resistance of R2 is R2, and the resistance of R3 is R3. So you can see that these are three different values. Now what I wanted you to learn from this video is just that you can only apply Ohm's law when you're looking at one of these columns. If you're looking at the entire circuit or a complete loop in the circuit, you can definitely compare those values and Ohm's law will hold true. Or if you're just looking at one resistor, you can compare those values and Ohm's law will again hold true. What you can't do is take, say, the voltage from the circuit, the resistance from one of the resistors and the current from a different resistor. Those values are not going to fit into Ohm's law because you're not looking at one scale. You're looking at different parts that don't fit together. 
So the important thing to keep in mind is make sure you know what you're looking at the voltage of, what you're looking at the current of, and what you're looking at the resistance of. And you shouldn't have many problems when you're working with Ohm's Law.